Hey guys, it's DS Vault. Uh, with the new patch coming uh, to Age of Empires 2, I wanted to talk about uh, how it's going to affect the uh, 2v2 World Cup meta. And as of this, uh, as of me recording this, uh, Silver League is going to play on the new patch, and Gold League is going to continue to play on the previous patch. And I'll talk about that a bit more at the end. Now, I wanted to talk about the big winner of the patch in terms of 2v2 and I believe that is the Turks getting their plus one pierce armor on the scout cav starting in feudal age actually it doesn't even say that it starts in feudal age here I'm assuming it does and it doesn't really matter except for running into CC and dark age but anyway um, so why is this such a big change basically Turks get the free upgrade uh, from scout cav to light cav and then they get one free pierce armor uh, I mean, like I said, I believe it starts in Feudal Age, but it doesn't actually say here. Uh, that means that their Scout Cab, once you get armor, and they get full Blacksmith upgrades, um, has four Pierce Armor in Feudal Age. Now, an Archer with Fletching deals five damage, four plus one, which means that your, your Scout, which has 45 HP without Bloodlines, all of a sudden takes 45 shots to kill. They are going to be absolute tanks and dominate the Feudal Age, in my opinion, as long as the, the Turk player uh, gets an early blacksmith and goes for scale barding. Oh, that's kind of weird. I was on Bulgarians earlier, and it's showing up the text costing less, even though I'm on Turk's point of view. It's a bit of a UI bug. Anyway, um, so I, I think that the biggest winner of this patch is Turks because of that. So they're going to have a huge uh, power spike in Feudal Age with having absolute tanks for Scout Cavs. And then the moment they hit Castle Age, those those uh, Scout Cavs are going to get upgraded into Light Cavs for free, which is going to give them an enormous power spike for the like, first like minute and a half of Castle Age. And then they get Knights with full upgrades, and then they get Cavalier with full upgrades. And I, I mean, you're seeing a lot of uh, Civs get played as the Scout into Knight Civ. Um, that don't get Paladin, and so, and, I mean, a lot of games you see end before anyone ever gets, you know, the chance to go Paladin. So I think that they are the biggest winners of this patch. Now, the second winner of this patch, I think, is just any Scout Civ in general, because of the, uh, the changes to walling, where walls now take longer to build, and incomplete walls now have no armor, which means I think that you're gonna see either less walling overall or that the walls are going to take longer to get up and so the scout player in the 2v2 is going to have the option to get into somebody's base before they've completely closed it up and start getting some vil picks so you know a civ like magyars a civ like franks who have a really strong scout rush i think they're going to benefit from from that that indirect uh buff uh the other Civ that I think did fairly well this patch in terms of a 2v2 would be the Bulgarians. Um, you know, they, they have scouts with full upgrades. Technically, endgame, they have the best Hussar in the game, in my opinion, with the faster attacking Hussar. That doesn't really matter so much because you're going to be going into knights. Um, but their blacksmith, the food on them is half off. So instead of 150, it's 75 for skill barding. Same thing with uh, forging. The big one being in Castle Age, you can definitely afford uh, Chain Barding, because it's only 125 food, uh, compared to most other civs that have to delay it, and it comes in exceedingly quickly, and then if you make it to Imp, I mean, Bulgarians pre-patch, if they made it to Imp with a decent like amount of knights and getting their unique technology, Stirrups, which means they attack 33% faster, um, so Bulgarians hitting Imp, now you can research Plate Barding, you can get it insanely fast because the blacksmith works 80% faster. And it's incredibly cheap. It's only 175 food and 200 gold. And if you go double blacksmith, which is kind of the meta right now, you could have blast furnace and plate barding on your knights while they're waiting to upgrade a cavalier. They're faster attacking already if you've, if you've put down a castle, which you should be doing like in late castle going up to imp as Bulgarians even in 2v2 um, and you just have this insane power spike for the first literally like three minutes of, of imp uh, when you get there 
So I think they're another sieve that's done well uh, this patch. After that, um, I mean, Koreans kind of did okay. They get they get uh, the free archer armor upgrade, so they could be situationally used. Uh, I still think you're going to see a lot of other archer civs picked over them, just because people are more familiar with playing them. And I think this is more of a 1v1 thing, because it's going to affect archer v archer, or if you go into skirms, which you're not going to do in a team game. Um, another situational one would be uh, Portuguese. I think that you could situationally see them now, uh, you know, if teams pick uh, Nomad, or if teams pick uh, Team Islands, because the uh, the the team bonus where they get uh, shared line of sight they get the 30 percent uh increased um technology speed they have you know more hp on the ships so i think portuguese i mean like they did okay this patch in terms of tv2 balance i think i still think you the only reason you're ever going to see them picked is on a water map uh and then lastly another situational one would be tatars um you're probably going to, if you do see them, you're probably going to see them going archers into crossbow because they get the free thumb ring and then maybe transitioning if they can. I mean, they really want to be going into cav archers. That's kind of expensive and hard to mass, especially in 2v2. Um, but I think you could possibly see them go archers into expo and then possibly try to transition into cav archer on a map like Golden Pit if that gets picked. Um... I, I don't know really what to think of their sheet bonus on the TC yet. That's kind of a weird one. Maybe it helps delay putting down farms until you can get the farm upgrade because they get, I mean, two sheet with them is technically about another 300 free food. And since you're going to delay with archers, uh, horse collar, you know, you could, you can delay that and the, those farms even further because you get those two free sheep on hitting feudal. Um, but once again, I think, like, they, they did uh, did okay uh, this patch in terms of 2v2 potential, but you're still probably going to see a lot of other uh, good 2v2 archers picked over them just because the players are more familiar with them. They have more games on them being played. Uh, the big losers for this patch, and finally, would be uh, Khmer. Um, their farmers got a nerf. They went from minus 3% to 5%, which not a huge nerf it's only a two percent you know reduction um to their farming speed uh and then they got a battle elephant nerf uh so their battle elephants only go 10 percent faster as opposed to 15. you also saw a battle elephant nerf uh in terms of damage to buildings which is a big reason why you were seeing battle elephants used because once you want to fight they were like de facto siege weapons um and you could take out stables and whatnot then again, um, I think the only time that I saw Battle Elephants really be used, and I mean, I haven't watched a whole lot of Silver League, but um, I, I forget who was playing, but it was a uh, Golden Pit game, and the Battle Elephants just died to pikes because uh, the Archer player was getting harassed on the other side. Um, so, it's it, I mean, it's kind of a nerf from 2v2. I still think they have a strong... You know, scout into night because you don't have to, you don't technically have to make the barracks. You can get up super early. Your farmers are still faster, but it, you know, a bit of a bit of a nerf to Khmer. And then the biggest losers, Indians. Okay, uh, Indians technically get a free Pierce armor on their scout calves into light calf upon hitting Castle Age. That is, it's it's not even compared to the Turk bonus. Totally in a different league. They don't get it till Castle Age. Uh, you're not going to be going, you know, scouts into Light Cav. Once you hit Castle Age, you're going to be going into Camels. Their Camels, technically, the same strength that they were pre-patch in Castle Age. Only in Castle Age. Post-Castle Age, once you get to Imperial Age, they miss Play Barding now. So, they get... So they used to get one free pierce armor on all their camels, de facto. And that was like, so the moment you could start creating camels, plus one pierce armor. And that's huge because camels, unlike knights, don't have any pierce armor, whereas knights have two. Which means, even though they have the same health pool, like knights can take pretty much double the shots from crossbows that camels take. And the reason Indians were so good was because... 
they got one free pierce armor, so like their camels are beating the knights in melee, and then they're not dying as fast as other civs camels would die to to the crossbows. So you're still gonna see that in Castle Age. However, once you hit Imp, their heavy camels are objectively worse than any other civ's heavy camels. And every civ that gets uh, camel rider gets heavy camel, except for uh, what is it, Cumans. Um, so they're gonna be missing. They don't. So like they they hit Imp, they're gonna get. They have that one uh, Pierce armor from Castle Age, and then they're gonna get another one from hitting Imp. So technically, they have like the uh, the Pierce armor of uh, plate mail or plate barding, I should say. Uh, but they're gonna miss out on that plus one normal armor. So in um, you know, knight v camel engagements, they're gonna do objectively worse in those engagements than other heavy camels. So you're not even seeing a bonus for them until they hit imp camel, which is basically the same cost as paladin. And it's going to die faster than old M camels would to Arbalest. Like, once once you, once you the, the Arbalest player hits M, they are going to shred through Indian camels. And the other thing is, they lost one damage on their attack first buildings, which I thought was warranted. They probably didn't need to implement the other changes. Just bring that down to, like, plus three and leave out this change. And Indian camels are fine, because thing was once you won any type of engagement you just destroyed the other team's production buildings and won the game um but yeah that's pretty much uh the 2v2 patch in a nutshell and uh how it implements that meta at least as far as i can see now i wanted to bring it back and say that silver league is going to be playing on the new patch and that's because there's like 200 teams that are playing in silver league um Whereas Gold League, the you know basically the Pro League, is going to be playing on the old patch. Now I can kind of understand why they're going to do that. You know it makes things more consistent for the pro players, and in a patch where they're playing for, you know, a good sized, uh, you know, uh, pool of money at the end, you kind of do want that stability. But at the same time, this is literally the biggest patch we have had in terms of balance and. Uh, you know, uh, UI and every, like, the biggest patch that DES had since it came out. And Gold League is going to have a lot of people watching it, like, many, many, many more times uh, the amount of, the, of people watching than Silver League will. And this would be a good chance to show off the balance and get people... I, I mean, like, it's weird watching, and you see it in a lot of other, a lot of other esports... But it's weird watching a, a, you know, a game where the balance is different than what you yourself are actually going to be playing. It's just kind of odd. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that, and thanks for watching.